Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar. Today's webinar topic is the Carlyle Group modernizes file services with Satera and AWS. We have three presenters. Uh, my name is Mike Ruiz. I'm a solutions architect here at Amazon Web Services. We also have Simon Michelson, chief architect North, North America at Satera. And finally, we're very pleased to have Jennifer Gould. She's the associate vice president of global technology and solutions at the Carlyle Group. Today's agenda, we'll try to keep it simple. I'll, I'll lead with an overview of AWS and AWS Marketplace with an emphasis on AWS storage solutions. Uh, then we'll hand it over to Simon to learn about a, an overview of the Satera solutions featured in our story. And then finally, we'll hear from Jennifer um, as she discusses the Carlyle Group success story with AWS and Satera. We will leave a few minutes at the end of the webinar for Q&A um, with our panel today. As you have questions, or questions occur to you during the presentation, please fill them out in the question pane in the webinar control panel. Um, we do want to respect everyone's time, so we will close the webinar right at the top of the hour. If we're unable to get to your question, we'll go ahead and follow up with you via email after the session today. And finally, to let you know, we are recording the webinar today. We'll make a, a link to the webinar recording as well as a link to the webinar deck available to you. We'll send that um, via email within a few days of the close of the webinar today. Just to let you know, as the webinar, after the webinar closes, there will be a survey. We'd love to have you fill that out. Um, we absolutely use your feedback to improve these webinar sessions. So love to have you stick around and fill out that survey after the webinar closes today. So learning objectives. We want to learn how to solve business continuity and file access challenges with Satera and AWS. We also want to learn how Satera and AWS can help achieve security and compliance objectives and safely store data in the cloud. And finally, and importantly, we want to learn how Satera and AWS can deliver a potential 80% cost reduction by replacing legacy IT infrastructure and processes. And that last word, processes, is really important. We often talk about infrastructure when we're discussing cloud and AWS, but process is just as important at potential cost savings. So uh, really important to learn, learn about how we can modernize our processes as well as our infrastructure. And so without further ado, I'll, I will do a very brief uh, survey style uh, overview of the AWS storage ecosystem. It is a comprehensive platform that evolves continually, continually as, we get, as we gain feedback from our customers. Our customers drive our roadmap. Um, and so I will do a very brief overview and kind of seek to set the stage here for Satera and Jennifer at, at the Carlyle Group. So why do our customers uh, say they choose AWS for storage? Four main reasons we, we hear a lot. We, we talk a lot about the compelling economics of the cloud, and this is really important. When we use storage solutions at AWS, we're gonna pay for what we use uh, when we use it. There's no upfront investment and no co required commitments. This can de-risk capacity planning. Uh, we're gonna to totally remove the concept of a three to five year depreciation schedule for hardware assets. Um, we're going to rapidly be able to deploy this infrastructure. We're not looking at, at weeks or months or even, even years to deploy new hardware assets in a data center. And because we're going to use, uh, we're going to pay for what we use and we're going to uh, put it online when we need it, we don't need a provision for redundancy or overhead. The platform has been designed for ease of use with self-service administration available for all the services we're talking about today. Of course, we can launch new services and applications out of the AWS marketplace with a single click of a button. Uh, so Satera, will, Satera is an example of a solution that could be deployed in that way. And we offer comprehensive SDKs for our APIs for simple integration with our services uh, for both your developers and partners like Satera. Uh, customers tell us they can reduce risk with AWS storage. Of course, the platform is durable and secure. Uh, security is job one at AWS. And you can avoid the risk of physical media handling. So we're not going to offsite uh, boxes of tapes or physical media. We're not going to worry about chain of custody for that physical media as it leaves our data center. And we're going to place those data, th th those data assets securely in the cloud. And they're going to, we're also going to reduce the risk to our projects and our processes that rely on the data. So as a, for instance, I'm no longer going to have to coordinate the arrival of a pallet full of tape at a DR site. I'm going to be sure that that data is already in place. It's available in AWS. I can test that it's there. And I know that it's going to be there when I need it. And taken collectively, we can improve speed we can increase our agility, and we can improve our ability to scale uh, with these three features. This can dramatically reduce time to market for new features. Uh, we can spend time driving the, data, the value from our data. We can explore our data uh, easily, and we can, allow, we can now focus on our business and the business value of our data and not our infrastructure. 
So important to understand that AWS Storage is a platform, and it's at this point it's a mature platform with file, block, and object services of various types to accommodate different customer workloads, and of course, uh, data transfer to enable access to that data. And so I'll go from the uh, top right here just as a, as a quick survey of the types of services that are available. Amazon S3 is an object storage service. Uh, an object storage service makes data available through an internet API, um, so it can be accessed anywhere. And we can use services like Amazon S3 um, for a variety of different use cases, media storage and distribution, uh, to hydrate a data lake, for instance, as a backup target, um, and as a storage tier for serverless computing applications. So a variety, a wide variety of different use cases. Uh, Amazon S3 is designed for nine, 11 nines of durability, um, and of course it scales with many customers storing billions of objects and exabytes of data. Um, Amazon Glacier is an adjacent object service with uh, similar features. It's durable, it's secure, and it's particularly suited for long-term backup and data archiving. Kind of moving to the left, we have block services. Um, Amazon EBS is a block um, level storage service for use with Amazon EC2, or virtual machine platform. Uh, Amazon EC EBS can deliver performance for workloads that require the lowest latency access uh, to a single EC2 instance. Um, EBS is offered in a variety of different performance profiles with SSD and, and HDD back solutions. And of course, because it's a managed service, we can snapshot, make those snapshots available for point in time backups, use those snapshots to clone data. Um, and because EBS snapshots are backed by S3, um, we can make that those snapshots available both in an Amazon region and across Amazon regions. So we can use EBS, copy those snapshots and make, make those snapshots available in another region. Um, Amazon EC2 is another block service that provides temporary block storage. This is useful for such things as buffers, caches, scratch data, um, data analytics that require a streaming throughput. Um, these are physical media devices that are attached to virtual machines, and so they're um, typically temporary data is, is uh, how that's placed. And finally, Amazon EFS is a, a file storage service with, that offers file system access semantics for strong consistency and file locking. Um, it uses the NFS v4 protocol, and we can make then a file system available across thousands of EC2 instances. And of course, all of these are made more useful with data transfer, so we can actually access these services. Uh, we have AWS Direct Connect, bottom left. This is a peering connection for your, from your data center to AWS, so you can peer with AWS for uh, high-speed, highly reliable data transfer uh, or transit to and from your data center to AWS. We have AWS Snowball, which provides an out-of-band transfer solution for your data to AWS. We'll ship you a device, you can load it up, send it back to us, and we'll load your data on S3. Critically, we can reverse the streams and send that Snowball right back to you with data from S3. Uh, we have Kinesis Firehose to uh, flow event data into S3, S3 transfer acceleration, uh, so that you can uh, accelerate uploads and downloads from S3 at one of our more than 50 edge locations around the world. And we'll talk about Storage Gateway right now. Storage Gateway is an interesting service that allows you, it's in this diagram, just to place you. We have a data center on the left-hand side and AWS on the right-hand side. And then we have your servers, your existing server fleet. And in the middle there, we wanted to have a diagram where we show your server using native storage protocols like iSCSI and NFS, SMB or SIFS. And then a, a AWS Storage Gateway Appliance. This would be a virtual machine that runs on your virtual uh, virtual uh, machine infrastructure that presents Amazon S3 and Amazon EBS as native storage constructs using your native protocol. So if you need to expand your data footprint, maybe would like to avoid a hardware procurement lifecycle, you can drop a virtual machine in, use the AWS Storage Gateway product or, or a, a complementary solution like that provided by Sotera, and then use Amazon on the right-hand side uh, using your native storage protocols and, and critically your, your, your native processes, your existing processes. Of course, we can also use the native APIs and, and access methods to access Glacier and store NS3 directly. Backup recovery and archive use cases are also well supported here. So AWS Storage Gateway is still sitting there um, front and center. Uh, in this, this use case though, we, we might have a server running backup software like NetBackup and we can, we can access then AWS Storage Gateway using a virtual construct like a virtual tape library and virtual tapes. Uh, so that virtual tapes are, are in place in Amazon S3. So we're still using our, our same backup software, 
we're using the same mechanics. We're, we're operating a virtual tape library instead of the physical tape library, and we're placing virtual tapes in Amazon S3, but all of our processes and procedures are intact. Uh, the difference is I'm no longer off-siting physical media. I'm allowing Amazon to handle that, and I've got Amazon S3 uh, backing that. So then when I move to a, a dis disaster recovery motion, I'm confident that those virtual tapes are already online. And of course, I can do a recovery right in, in Amazon as well. Many backup products support uh, our native access methods as well. And so as if, for instance, I'll just use uh, Veritas Net Backup again. A Veritas Net Backup media server can use Amazon S3 as primary storage. Uh, when you configure a bucket in a media server, it just shows up as a 16 petabyte location to store data. And so uh, as we're ready to move on from a virtual tape, uh, we, we can just use Amazon S3 directly uh, using our existing software stack. Then finally, none of this is very interesting if we don't have certifications and we don't have uh, comply with assurance programs. Uh, AWS uh, has a variety of different compliance and, and assurance solutions. You can build compliant stacks and, and operate compliant uh, applications on the AWS platform. Really too many to mention here. I invite you to, to visit aws.amazon.com slash compliance for more information on this, but it's a really interesting program and many of our use cases demand uh, data governance. Um, it, it's absolutely possible to build solutions that are compliant on the AWS platform. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Simon for a discussion of the Cetera solution on AWS. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to walk through a brief overview about the Cetera solution, and then I'll hand over to Jennifer Gold, who can walk through the Carlisle uh, group use case and case study. Hello, everyone. My name is Simon Michelson. I'm a chief architect with the Cetera Networks. So a little bit about Cetera and... Um, really about our company. So Cetera is nine years old. We're a mature and high growth uh, cloud solutions provider. Uh, our company is global. We have headquarters uh, in New York City uh, and also in Israel where we run engineering. Uh, of course we have offices again worldwide. Uh, we're backed by world leading top tier investors and, and tracked by uh, leading enterprise IT analysts in the market. And, and really our mission as a company uh, is, is to help our customers uh, through that journey uh, to the cloud uh, as they embrace uh, cloud file services and uh, really help them obtain the tools that they need to become more productive, more agile, while providing uh, more control to enterprise IT. Uh, here's a selection of our um, some of Citera's world-leading customers today, up to date. We're working with the largest enterprise and service providers uh, customers. Uh, we have a very horizontal product, which means that um, you can see uh, companies from almost every vertical in the market. I, very ideal for uh, IT as a service delivery. Uh, we've shipped solutions for over 110 countries. Uh, our platform up to date powers uh, over 35,000 businesses globally. And um, it's ranging from uh, the world's la largest enterprises to uh, uh, many of the world's uh, largest cloud services providers, companies such as uh, Swisscom, Telefonica, Orange Business Services, uh, so on and so forth. Um, in terms of uh, cloud storage gateways, we have shipped more than uh, gateways than all the other cloud storage gateway vendors combined. And uh, we see rapid growth in our uh, enterprise business, uh, especially uh, year to year, um, as we uh, help them deploy more modern and, and secure file services. Uh, to their um, employees and, and business partners. So a short introduction, uh, we see uh, a massive disruption in the unstructured data space um, with the explosion in uh, unstructured data, uh, the significant growth that we've experienced in the last four years, uh, uh, over 50% is reported by the IDC uh, uh, alone. Um, and then uh, th this is one problem we need to deal with today as we start using more devices and more, more applicate, deploy more applications, we start to work with a lot more data. Uh, on the other hand, we have our uh, end users, our, our employees, where they require modern, modern tools and utilities so they can access their, their data from anywhere around the world. This is, of course, poses a um, somewhat of a challenge or a risk to IT, where they have now to uh, manage all different types of systems as users get Tech, uh, they're very tech savvy today. They have a lot of uh, uh, control where they can simply download and, and, and install every, uh, the types of applications they want to use. And of course, IT uh, has to manage uh, it for them uh, as a result. And we see uh, an increase in the amount of ransomware attacks uh, uh, in the market as, as companies are held uh, captive to paying a ransom for uh, decrypting their data. 
otherwise they may, may be risking to go out of business. Essentially, cloud transformation uh, as part of this problem is inevitable. Uh, we are looking for tools that will provide modern experience to our end users, a system that will elastically scale uh, based on our based on demand, based on our needs, uh, as we grow the amount of users, uh, as we hire more employees to our company, or we start dealing with uh, large, larger portions of data. And of course, we want to do that while leveraging the uh, cloud economics and we want to leverage the cloud for its cost benefits and, and easy scaling uh, and really drive uh, the total cost of ownership down. But of course not all cloud uh, clouds are the same, right? Uh, some some applications may live purely public, some of them uh, for uh, security reasons have to stay private or of course we can go look at a hybrid architectures where certain components uh, are kept private and others are kept public as, as we go and deploy new applications. So really the Dream Enterprise File Services platform uh, is one that uh, provides our users with modern tools for collaboration. It reduces the time it takes to perform disaster recovery or become productive again after an, an incident has occurred. It's really ubiquitous and provides file access from anywhere around the world. So it doesn't matter if I'm flying uh, or I'm working out of an office in Florida or uh, I want to collaborate with a, with a person in Hong Kong, I can do that through that same system from any location around the world. And of course, enterprise IT require that control uh, so that they can apply centralized governance, security, and, uh, and manage the solution um, and help, of course, comply with uh, uh, regulations for keeping data uh, at certain locations, data sovereignty, data residency, so on and so forth. Uh, presenting Citera, uh, your files, your cloud. Uh, so the Citera Enterprise File Services Platform is the only solution that provides uh, a full continuum of cloud-based file services across the enterprise today. Uh, it's a platform that supports multiple use cases ranging from uh, private enterprise file sync and share, uh, data protection, uh, as well as remote office uh, uh, brand storage with uh, disaster recovery and, and file archiving abilities. Uh, as a platform, not as a service, you deploy the solution entirely in your own terms. Uh, which means that there's no third-party data access. Um, you, as the customer, you control the encryption keys, you control where the data resides, so you can ensure you're meeting your corporate compliance. And uh, the solution uh, is really optimized uh, in terms of uh, security and, and the ability to control the cost as you, as you scale, uh, as you deploy more user accounts, as you start dealing with larger portions of, uh, of, of data. Uh, while keeping flexibility for choosing your uh, where components of, of the solution are, are hosted uh, really gives you the flexibility to, uh, uh, to scale and, and elastically move as your requirements change. Briefly, in a high level, to review the Citera uh, portal uh, or Citera solution architecture, uh, on the left end of this diagram, we can see the different types of access points that we have to uh, uh, that we provide access to our users at the at the edge. Essentially, uh, this can be gateways, enterprise NAS appliances uh, that uh, support traditional protocols such as SMB or NFS with uh, uh, full Active Directory integration for applying uh, domain users and groups permission. It comes with built-in disaster recovery to the cloud as well as with file archiving abilities. And they essentially provide a land speed access for, for remote locations where uh, the network infrastructure does not permit us or does not enable us to go directly to the cloud uh, because of low bandwidth or let's say high latency problems essentially. Uh, those gateways of course come with, uh, with uh, they essentially ship snapshots or copies, they syn synchronize in real time uh, the data to the cloud uh, and this way uh, facilitate that seamless disaster recovery. Another form of access method is what we call uh, um, uh, our endpoints uh, for MacBook, Linux and Windows. Uh, where, uh, or of course, applications for uh, iOS and Android, uh, where roaming users can essentially synchronize a local copy of their data to their laptops and is, of course, available to, the, to them whenever they go uh, outside of the firewall. And lastly, we have our what we call direct to cloud access, where users can use their um, browser or mobile applications to uh, browse the cloud directly. Um, in the middle, we have our data transport. Um, we have our protocols that um, take care of security as well as efficiency, as we help you to deduplicate the data at the source as well as encrypt it twice and this way achieve more security. And then on the right hand of the diagram, we have uh, Citera Portal, which is really the uh, 
orchestration platform or your cloud file system uh, that integrates with AWS uh, and also provides enterprise integration for automation, monitoring, billing, and even centralized antivirus scanning. From a use case coverage, as you can see, Citera aims to provide solutions for the full continuum uh, from uh, ranging from remote office storage, secure file sharing, uh, both ex externally and internally, as well as backup and, and archiving solutions for the enterprise. Uh, lastly, uh, it's important to know that uh, the company's roots is uh, essentially from uh, the security space. Um, that's uh, uh, where we come from as a, as a, as a company uh, and the founders of the company. Um, and really, uh, we aim to provide solutions for verticals such as defense, uh, healthcare, uh, financial uh, sectors, so on and so forth, where, where typically you deal with a lot of compliance and um, the security requirements uh, are very stringent. So ranging from uh, FIPS 140-2 support, uh, being able to choose where encryption keys are stored and, how, and, and who manages them, this is all uh, capabilities delivered by our platform. My final slide before I hand it over to Jennifer. Um, today, actually, uh, by incident, it's uh, my coincidence. It's um, uh, it's a very special special day for Citera as we uh, announce uh, our uh, next major release of uh, the Citera Enterprise File Services platform. We call it Citera 6.0, uh, which introduces some significant uh, improvements to uh, to our solutions. Uh, one is uh, infinite file capacity. Uh, or what we call the global namespace, where you can essentially look at uh, exposed petabytes of data that reside in a cloud to uh, a laptop that can only uh, uh, store about a few hundreds of gigabytes, or a Citera gateway that can uh, store about a few tens of terabytes of data. So really, you have ubiquitous access to a petabyte of namespace from, uh, from any location. Improvements of uh, speed of file access, as we essentially have integrated caching support for laptops, desktops, as well as uh, Citera gateways. Uh, we've introduced brand new uh, migration tools uh, for uh, migrating your existing file servers onto the Citera gateways, which um, not only will replicate your data, as well as will make sure that all security permissions and ACLs are kept intact after you move. And of course, some expanded use cases for uh, file archiving and caching capabilities for uh, really helping you uh, to reduce the cost and, and uh, replace uh, scale up NAS solutions with uh, more cost effective uh, uh, appliances. Uh, with that, uh, I'll hand it over to uh, Jennifer Gold from the Carla Group. Thank you, Simon. My name is Jennifer Gold, Associate President, Vice President of Global IT Operations for the Carlisle Group. The Carlisle Group is one of the largest private equity firms in the world with over $162 billion of assets under management across 287 investment vehicles. We're based in Washington, D.C. and we have 35 offices located in 25 different countries across the globe. Our global infrastructure is managed by teams located in D.C., New York, London, and Hong Kong. My background is in systems engineering and architecture. I run global IT operations at Carlisle, as well as business continuity planning and disaster recovery testing. I'm also currently working on security projects for the firm. As a global company that relies heavily on Excel and other shared documents for both strategic analysis and day-to-day -day operations, our file servers are one of our most critical business technologies. Our data is our intellectual property. A few years ago, we were facing key business challenges with our legacy Windows Server architecture. The majority of our file server environment was running on hardware that was approaching end of life and support and was prone to hardware failures. Many of the servers were also operating at capacity. Our environment had single points of failure, performance limitations, and limited growth options. We started the process to evaluate file server replacement solutions. Our goal was to modernize our environment while retaining the existing local access and functionality for our users. We needed a solution that would be both scalable and efficient while addressing the evolving requirements of our business. At the same time we were evaluating file server solutions, we were also conducting major updates to our business continuity and disaster recovery plans. As part of this effort, we identified the need to implement a fully redundant solution for our file servers. At the time, there was no redundancy in place. Moreover, our existing solution required extended time for hardware replacement and data restoration. It was taking us hours to days, depending on the location and severity of the outage. 
the risk and potential lag time was unacceptable given the critical role that our file servers play. It was clear that we needed a solution that would provide DR capabilities as well as real-time data availability. Additionally, we needed a solution that was fast. With our existing solution, each office had an on-premise file server to provide users with fast local access to data they needed, as well as localized storage. However, inter-office sharing and remote file access was cumbersome and slow. We needed a new solution that would replicate the speed of local file access and improve the speed of global and remote file sharing, while also providing enhanced storage and retaining the same on-premise security requirements as our existing infrastructure. And with 35 offices located in 25 different countries, centralizing file services in a traditional manner was not an option based on the geographical complexities of our organization. To summarize our challenges, our legacy infrastructure technology lacked redundancy and posed a significant business continuity risk. Additionally, while local file access was efficient, global file sharing was slow, and local file servers were only available directly through the Carlisle network. What we really needed was a solution that was fully redundant, geographically dispersed, that would eliminate data access latency and meet our rigorous security standards. Previously, when a file server in a remote office went down, our placement server could take as long as a week to become fully operational, and that just did not work for our business. In addressing these challenges, we needed to implement a new architecture design and do so without interruption to the business or altering their existing setup, including their drive mappings. We evaluated different vendor solutions, but based on our existing file structure, network topology, and current security requirements. None of them met our architecture standards until we evaluated Cetera. Cetera proposed logical architecture for our regions, utilizing cloud storage gateways in each office. And we started a POC with Cetera, and we began a rigorous testing phase. I emphasize the word rigorous, and I'm sure that Simon can attest to this. Ultimately, we decided to leverage Cetera portals with Amazon Web Services S3 storage as our backend destination for our organizational files. Cetera gateways provide local NAS storage to replace our legacy filers and automatically snapshot, globally deduplicate, compress, and store our files in our VPC, our virtual private cloud, hosted on AWS. In approaching our migration strategy to Cetera, we took the opportunity to evaluate legacy architecture, flatten our file structure where needed, perform cleanup, and address areas of broken inheritance. Cetera supported our existing file structure, and we used secure copy to copy over all of our ACLs and file attributes. We also preceded and ran beyond compare reports following the migration. Many of these features are now being incorporated into the Terra Migration Wizard, I believe in the new version that Simon just spoke about. Fast forward to almost one year later, across six continents, from the US to Johannesburg to Tokyo, and we're fully migrated to the solution. We've performed numerous DR tests, and we've even had one unplanned DR scenario occur in the middle of our yearly DR test, and the users were still uninterrupted. The bottom line for us is that the solution works well. And some key points that I'd like to mention. We successfully achieved a seamless migration with minimal disruption to our users. The one-to-one -one local drive mapping with Cetera gateways was essential to ensuring this. Amazon S3 is a very secure service. It has high availability and high scalability. Only the owner and bucket have access to the S3 resources. So when you create your S3 bucket, you specify your region. Within that region, your objects are redundantly stored across multiple facilities within that region. The global presence of AWS enables us to address specific legal and regulatory requirements. It allows data access to the cloud without latency, which we've measured in several tests, and it's allowed us to reduce our storage costs. The flexibility of Cetera and the global presence of AWS aligned well. The implementation allowed us to leverage our existing network infrastructure. We were able to centrally manage three separate regions under a single platform while ensuring each region's data stayed in region. 
A couple benefits I'd like to highlight. The always on DR eliminated network dependency. We can access files in any DR scenario. If the gateway goes down or there's a network failure, we still have access. This also provided a high availability platform for us by providing gateways and devices in offices globally with additional hardware redundancy located at our data centers. Most notably, we were able to solve our critical challenges around BCP. So this was really the huge one for us. In the event of a local outage, users can continue to work as usual. They retain their same drive mappings, there is zero interruption, and they have seamless access to their files. The solution removes the dependency on the local area network by providing users with a direct link to the cloud so they can continue to work. And it eliminates that need for the manual restoration processes that we had in the past. I'd like to speak a little bit about the security. Um, so we own all of our data, tools, and encryption keys. Satara so takes a multi-level approach to their encryption. This includes source-based encryption for their data before it is sent out across the WAN, and encryption as the data is transmitted over a TLS connection. With Satara and AWS, we don't experience the security risks of shared software as a service offerings because our data is stored behind our firewall in a VPC that no third party has access to. Satara is also integrated with our Active Directory, ensuring our file access permissions and user authentication remain secure and consistent. By reducing our legacy NAS appliances, we've removed the associated maintenance tasks, we've eliminated costly maintenance contracts, and we've reduced our overall footprint. This is a win-win because it frees up resources on every level. Our operations team can now focus on more on delivering products and services that align with business strategy and enhance the user experience. Overall, we've improved business continuity posture, reduced cost, and reduced solution complexity. Zotero deduplication and compression reduced the physical storage footprint on AWS by 92% for North America alone. We've reduced our maintenance overhead, the deployment resulted in a hardware footprint reduction and associated colo cost reduction. We've reduced RTE costs, and we've also reduced the need for additional hardware purchases, so also the CapEx costs. In our phase one implementation, we addressed the need for file server and storage solution that provided us with business continuity capability and centralized management. In phase two, we're now exploring ways to leverage Satara as a holistic solution for other data management needs. We're evaluating other data use cases within our organization, such as opportunities for integration with our MDM solution. In summary, the Satara file server migration replaced our end-of-life software and hardware with a high availability solution that has provided us with enhanced disaster recovery and business continuity capabilities, additional security, resiliency, and centralized management. This solution supports our global business needs and has resulted in significant cost savings for our firm. Through innovative and collaborative technology projects, we're increasing our operational efficiencies and driving value for our investors. And to everyone on the call, thank you for your time and interest in this project. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. Um, this is Mike again. We'll go ahead and host a little bit of Q&A. So we've got some great questions uh, from the attendees today. I think the first one I think would be best addressed uh, by Simon. Uh, so the question, uh, does Satara have any option uh, to use Amazon without maintaining a local appliance or a virtual machine on premise? Yes. Um, essentially the, the, the Satara gateway uh, portion of our solution is optional for accelerating data access for remote locations. Uh, if um, um, network uh, permits and sufficient user experience, you can access directly to the cloud. Uh, the Citera portal middleware uh, provides its own uh, web interface, uh, mobile access, um, as well as you can map drives directly to Citera portal. Okay, fantastic. We have another uh, possibly a related question, and that is, does the Citera gateway or can the Citera gateway uh, run on AWS EC2 on, onto the virtual machine uh, foundation that AWS provides? Is Yes, absolutely. Citera Virtual Gateway can run as an EC2 instance. Uh, there are different types of, uh, of instance sizes. Uh, you can have a look at our website um, and pick the model that is best suited for your needs. 
Okay. Why, why might a customer choose such a solution? Why might a customer choose to run the Zotero gateway on, on EC2? First of all, is uh, for providing um, traditional protocol access. So um, Zotero Portal provides uh, uh, a web, a web dev, and RESTful API access as well as mobile access. But if you're looking to have, let's say, uh, rsync, uh, NFS, um, SMB access, so on and so forth, uh, Zotero Gateway is able to bridge that protocol um, to uh, uh, legacy file services protocols. Okay, yeah. great. We have another question uh, from the attendees regarding uh, encryption of assets within S3. And so just to level set, S3 does provide uh, three different options for server-side encryption, uh, either uh, S3 managed or SSE S3 is what it's called. So, but th this is an option where S3 manages the uh, the encryption itself, and so you you simply you know click a, bu a button, enable the feature on a bucket, and then the data will be encrypted at rest. Uh, you also have an option to use an Amazon service called KMS uh, to manage the encryption tokens, and you can also of course provide your own uh, customer key or client key. Uh, to S3 and S3 will use that uh, that key to encrypt data. Um, additionally, many customers choose to encrypt the data before they send it to S3, so this would be client-side encryption. And I think the question from the attendees are, uh, do the Carlyle group uh, encrypt data in, in S3 and, and do Satera provide any options to encrypt data before it, uh, before it ends up in S3? And so maybe, maybe Jennifer, did, did, did you want to speak to kind of your encryption strategy a little bit and, and how you view encryption and how you use it with Satera and AWS? Uh, Mike, I can believe that uh, I believe that I can I can address that as well. Okay, fantastic. Thanks. Go ahead, Simon. So, uh, yes, Satera, um, as I as I was describing, uh, our data transfer protocol incorporates both efficiency but also security. So, uh, we perform source-based encryption. So, whenever um, a file uh, will be sent from any Satera endpoint client uh, to to uh, Citera portal that uh, runs on AWS, uh, it will be encrypted at the source. Every block of that file will be encrypted uh, by AES-256. And then we have TLS for the, for, uh, the transport layer. Um, essentially, um, uh, if you were to access uh, S3 um, um, directly and take a look at what's stored there, uh, you will see a flat file system of uh, encrypted uh, uh, blocks, essentially. So Citera se serves as the metadata for reconstructing that files, and then uh, decryption of files it will only be done um, at, um, by the, the client, essentially. So uh, to reconstruct the file, you need the encryption key, and that uh, only the client will be capable of, of doing that. Uh, lastly, um, uh, for the Citera gateways portion, um, Citera gateways also support uh, volume encryption. So in case uh, a device is stolen, um, uh, it still ensures that uh, the, the privacy of that data. And, okay. and just to speak to our security keys, you know, as far as S3 and Citera, we maintain all of our, our security keys locally and manage all of our security keys. Okay, awesome. Another question uh, about data migration for you, Jennifer. What, was the migration difficult in the transition from traditional Windows file servers and NAS appliances? Did, did you have, I, I guess there's an operational component and maybe a management component there? Sure. So, um, so we worked with the Satara Professional Services team to plan the migration strategy to minimize the impact um, to end users. You know, the data mi migration process, it went very smooth. You know, we were able to maintain file access privileges and, you know, no issues, you know, in terms of post-migration. We did a lot of testing and preparation and a lot of staging and went through everything, you know, ahead of time in our, in our test lab. But all of our ACLs were preserved, all of our permissions were preserved, and all attributes and permissions and everything copied over very, very smoothly. It was a you know, very, very clean transition for all of our users. So you know, I give a lot of credit to um, the Satara Professional Services team in the way they supported our migration. Awesome, uh, thanks for that. Um, so you had mentioned, uh, and this is another question from, uh, from an attendee, uh, uh, latency or, or testing latency you know, as part of the solution. Can you, can you speak to more about that? Or maybe, maybe Simon has, has some comments there as well. The effect of latency and, and you know, how did you how did you test it and, and what, what were your findings there? Simon, do you want to do you want to talk to the latency between on-premise environments and and AWS regions? Um, yes, yeah, sure, uh, I can do that. So um, as part of uh, 
As part of our data trans transfer protocol, uh, they also integrate RAN optimization. Uh, so they are designed to work over high latency links. So up to 300 milliseconds from a remote location up onto your nearest uh, presence of, of AWS. As well as there could be uh, latency between uh, our software stacks, what we call Citera Portal and Amazon S3. Uh, we, um, our software is designed to uh, overcome that by, uh, let's say, leveraging more um, threads to, to store data in S3 or low data from S3, as well as caching algorithms um, to really provide a, a good user experience. Okay, fantastic. Can, can you, Simon, comment a little bit about the potential? So we mentioned this at the top of the deck, uh, you know, a potential cost savings of up to 80% uh, uh, by leveraging both infrastructure improvements and changes as well as operational improvements. Can you speak to a little bit more about uh, a project like uh, like what we're seeing here with the Carlyle Group, or maybe another project where uh, the, the net savings that were achieved. Sure. Yes. Typically, uh, we can see about from 60 to 75 percent uh, projects that are uh, very much uh, similar to the, the ones we, we implemented with the Carlyle Group uh, for remote site data protection and disaster recovery, T tape, tape replacement projects, file server replacement projects. Um, we're benefiting uh, not only from cloud economics, from um, the cost. Um, of AWS, uh, we're benefiting as well from the deduplication protocols incorporated to our to our solution, uh, as well as uh, the cost effectiveness of our appliances that are very uh, very compelling uh, versus uh, the competition. Okay, another question from uh, from the audience here concerning this the Satera Gateway product. Uh, so the question: Does it run on the Linux operating system only? And I, I guess a related question is: Is what's the life cycle of of the gateway, either as an appliance deployed on EC2 or an appli a, a, a appliance deployed on-prem. Do the customer have choices for operating systems? Should they be installing their own kind of configuration management, you know, antivirus on the, on those assets? What, what's the life cycle look for, like for those? Uh, so uh, it's delivered as an appliance, as a, as a black box. Um, it's a, an embedded Linux that we've, uh, it's a proprietary embedded Linux that we've uh, um, developed in Citera. Uh, it's not open for uh, installing software. Essentially, uh, the software updates are managed by, uh, by us, uh, where we uh, provision new, uh, let's say, uh, release new updates. Uh, you can centrally upload them to Citera portal, and they will propagate to all of your remote endpoints. For example, antivirus scanning, we have an integration. Um, so um, you can uh, hook Citera portal for, uh, to, to, with your choice of antivirus systems such as Symantec McAfee for performing centralized scanning. Other than that, this is a, it's a closed black box operating system, very efficient to really sustain the workload that we are uh, running. Okay. And, and I think probably a complimentary is, is we're kind of relieving the user from management of, of these as well, right? So right. that's another right. point of, of improvement maybe for an operational practice. Uh, here's a question that's it's perhaps a little bit more speculative. I, I know from from the news, you know, we, we know that ransomware attacks are kind of increasing in prevalence and, and are can be very impactful, you know, especially for for users that are affected or targeted. Um, does Satera have any uh, comments on how you know a ransomware a Satera might help you know protect a user from from ransomware from from attack uh, an attack such as ransomware or maybe another kind of virus. Yes, you can definitely leverage our solution for ransomware remediation. The portal, the, the Citera Enterprise File Services platform includes uh, uh, unlimited versioning uh, per individual files. So not only you can go back in time and restore individual files, you can also roll back the whole file system to a specific point in time before the attack has occurred. Um, now our synchronization protocols um, will ensure that once you roll back um, in, in the cloud, uh, it will also update everything at the edge site as per the operation you made. So uh, definitely uh, we've helped uh, customers up to date uh, to uh, recover from ransomware uh, attacks. Um, we, we had a few, we actually have a few case studies on our website uh, that you can refer to uh, um, showing a few customer quotes about uh, potentially going uh, out of business uh, unless for having uh, uh, data protection with Citera. I also feel like, um, Simon, an important thing to cite here, too, might also be to speak to the architecture of Satera and how it's designed to contain, you know, in the event of a data breach or other types of attacks, the architecture is designed to contain the attack itself. So it, it's, it's really um, 
a great way to mitigate an attack in the unlikely event that you do have a breach. Great. Another question for you, Jennifer, about business continuity. Um, so how has Carlisle's uh, DRBC testing changed versus the previous uh, file services model? So uh, I, I guess this would be a question about kind of the existing kind of pre-migration landscape and, and then and then how, how your processes might have changed or your testing might have changed over time. Sure. So we have, you know, we have our yearly, you know, DR testing that we perform, but we've also started increasing, you know, some of our DR testing and our, our BCP testing. Um, so we're able, you know, we're able to perform our BCP, our business continuity tests on a much more frequent basis with zero impact to end users. And that was something that was really important too, to be able to really test out the Cetera solution as we were deploying it. We wanted to make sure that failover was really seamless, that there weren't any issues with replication, that everything was working properly with our sync, that we could fail over from one site to another, um, that everything was working properly. And so we, we've done a lot of failover testing. So, um, you know, essentially, and that's all been done with zero impact to end users. So I think that that, you know, is one thing that's definitely changed. And also, um, you know, Satara maintains a near real-time asynchronous copy of data in our data centers, you know, providing the ability to verify um, data availability as well. So two key pieces to mention. Awesome. So thanks for that. So we have another question here. I think this would be directed to Satara. Or, or, or maybe Jennifer has some comments about this as well, but since server, since server backup is, is done by an OS agent typically, um, is it common for customers to use Cetera on AWS to back up AWS EC2 workloads? Definitely, yes. Uh, this one one form of, uh, we have several customers that do that today, is usually to provide file level backup and, and restore capabilities. Um, as, in addition to, of course, uh, uh, volume level snapshots done on EBSs, yeah. Okay, great. Another question about the potential cost savings. So I, I think Simon, you quoted 60 to 75% um, savings as, as typical. Um, and the question, would, would that be OPEX or, or CAPEX, I guess operational expense or, or capital expense or a blend of both? Uh, it's actually a blend of both, right? Um, you can purchase the solution as, um, as a software only, so it's all OPEX, of course. Or, of course, if you choose to, to deploy a, a physical uh, um, a gateway appliance that there's some capex capex involved in that, but of course you can go software only again. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, a lot of questions about kind of virus scanning, uh, may, maybe complementary to the question about ransomware. But um, so, how does virus scanning work? Maybe Simon, you just walk us through how virus scanning works in, in the uh, with, with the Cetera solution. Is it performed in the in the portal, or 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 where does it happen? And and what are the points of control for that? So it's performed centrally on the portal. Um, we support uh, companies such as, for example, as McAfee, Symantec, ESET, Sophos, uh, so on. Uh, we integrate through the ICAP protocol. Um, so you can add uh, antivirus servers to, to CTR portal, which will then take care of uh, on access and also in background scanning of all the content that is synchronized um, to, to our portal. Uh, if we found an, inf an, an infected file, it's then quarantined, uh, removed from your drive. Uh, the synchronization protocol ensures that it's also removed from the edge. Uh, administrators can, of course, download that quarantine file uh, 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 as, as an encrypted zip file uh, if, if they need that, that, that data, of course. And there's a lot of uh, policy built into it where you can uh, um, really tune whitelist or blacklist certain files. Uh, or even control, have more granular control over the operation of that antivirus server. Awesome. Uh, question about trans uh, transport. Uh, so we have edge gateways deployed, maybe, maybe in a customer environment. Um, are we using the internet to, to back all that data back to, to S3, or are we using kind of customer, uh, customer networking um, in, in typical, or, or can we use either, either or both? Um, it's either. As mentioned, uh, kind of at the top, uh, AWS S3, um, w which provides backing store for Cetera solutions, um, has its own API that's accessible over the internet. Um, but we can gain access to that API uh, also using uh, a peering relationship with AWS using Direct Connect. Um, we can also flow that 
flow that data over a VPN. Uh, so it, it's really kind of uh, down to your needs as a customer and into how you want to connect to AWS and then uh, Cetera, Cetera I think will take advantage of those transports. Is, is that accurate? That's accurate. Okay, awesome. I would also, uh, sorry to interrupt, but just to contribute to that, I would say, and that also exists in, you know, the majority of like Equinix data centers and, you know, the colos that, you know, Direct Connect is already available, so. Okay, cool. Here's a question about how data is stored in, in S3, and I think Jennifer actually addressed this pretty nicely. And so uh, when you configure S3, you're going to configure an object called a bucket. Um, and, and you're going to refer to that bucket to place your objects when you upload them or, or access them. Uh, buckets are, an, are what we, we call at AWS a regional construct. So AWS services are made available in 14 public regions across the globe. And you're going to specify one of those regions when you build a bucket um, with S3. Um, your data itself is stored durably uh, within the region uh, in, in another subconstruct called an availability zone. So a region is, is comprised of two or more availability zones um, and, and across multiple facilities. So your data, that, that's how we get that durability of, of 11 nines uh, with the service. Customers often ask, you know, once they in place data within a region, you know, when you declare a region in, in a bucket, uh, as a target for a bucket, uh, what happens then? And, and the, the answer is, you know, AWS will maintain the health and availability of the data within the region, but we won't move it out of the region uh, unless you instruct us to. So in, in, unless you download it or push it to a bucket in another region or enable a, a regional, a, a bucket to bucket copy across regions for DR purposes or just to make it available closer to your users. So that allows you to have days uh, to, to comply with various regulatory and compliance regimes where, where data sovereignty is important. You want to know the geographical location uh, of that data. So when, once you specify a region, AWS will put it in, and, you, and you place it in a bucket, AWS will leave it in that region and will not move it outside of that region unless you instruct us to. So with that, I think we're right at the top of the hour. Um, so I'd like to invite everyone to take a look at the Cetera um, uh, solution. Uh, we're staring at a link here, this www.satera.com slash trial to, to try out Satera for free. Um, you can also visit the AWS Marketplace um, uh, to deploy Satera and a variety of other solutions with one click, uh, many of them available with free trials. And just as a reminder, uh, there will be a, a survey. Um, we'd love for you to fill out that survey. It'll pop up after the end of the webinar today after it closes. AWS services and, and improvements are, are, are driven by customer feedback and uh, this is one of those examples. So we'd love to get your feedback on, on our webinar today. And then finally, as a reminder, we will send out a link with the recording to the webinar. So thanks everyone for joining us today and we look to hear from you soon.